So very interesting development. Andy Dalton has signed a deal with the Dallas Cowboys. Not really a team I was expecting him to go to, but it does make some sense. I mean, this gives them a good backup. And, you know, Dak Prescott, there is the idea of potentially him holding out next year. If he does, this gives you some insurance for that and gives you a little bit of leverage as well to show that you're not as concerned about potentially having to have somebody else play quarterback. You can ha now have a top-tier backup and someone that I still think is a top 32 quarterback in the NFL. It just so happens that every team already has the guy that they want to have be their starting quarterback, whether it's a young guy who has something to prove or just someone that they feel can run their offense better because they know the system better. And even last season, I didn't think he was that bad. I thought he was actually pretty good last season as well, even though he played for a team that ended up being the worst team in the NFL. So, you know, I mean, there were definitely some some uh, some negatives in his game, but for the most part, he played pretty well, and he is a very solid quarterback. He's never been uh, an MVP candidate outside of that one year, but he's always been solid, and he really finished strong, too. The last two games, he was pretty great in. You know, We'll start things off with the Miami game, uh, which was a loss, but there was that crazy comeback where they came back, found a way to tie the game, send it to overtime. Uh, this play was a good play late in that game where it was a cover three zone. And that's going to be the, the concept that really is going to be key here. You have your number three receiver, receiver closest towards, uh, it's actually tight end, closest towards the tackle. He's going to run deep. You then have number two receiver run sort of underneath like that. And the benefit of something like this is with the fact that, you know, it's zone coverage. So since someone's going to probably stay deep with the tight end, your receiver can get open underneath and watch after the ball is snapped. It's working out very well. He is open. So, you know, you might be thinking, why am I showing this play? You know, Andy Dalton didn't really have to do much. The play is already working. So who cares really? But the reason why I'm showing this play is because I want to show you this throw. I mean, they're about, you know, right now the receiver's about three yards away from a first down marker. So he definitely could get the first down, but if this isn't a great throw, this could easily end up just being a, you know, a catch. It's probably going to be a completion, but it might not get them the first down. Granted, it's already first and 10, not the biggest deal in the world, but watch how he does make a very accurate throw. They are able to get the first down because he was able to give his receiver as much of a chance as possible to pick up yards after the catch. Uh, and that's kind of what a quarterback can do in a lot of plays. A lot of times it isn't, you know, threading the needle and making these very difficult throws. Sometimes it is, and you have to be able to do that, and he can. I'll get into that in a second. But a lot of times it's not just the difference between making a throw or not making a throw. It's the difference between making things difficult on your receiver or easy on your receiver. Uh, and he made things very easy on his receiver on that play. Uh, and like I said, he can thread the needle. This play is an example of it, where it's going to be man coverage, and they have a pick play right there. So you might be thinking, oh, okay, perfect. So pick play against man coverage. That's when you want to run a pick play. But there is a problem. It's going to be that that Miami player, he's going to actually drop back in that area. I think Miami is kind of suspecting a pick play might be coming. You know, there's two receivers on that side of the screen. There is only uh, one eligible receiver on the other side of the screen. So it definitely makes sense to be a little bit more weary of what's going on right there. There's actually technically three eligible receivers on that side of the screen. So, uh, but you know, two receivers, one tight end. And uh, what's going to happen right after the ball is snapped is that the pick play part of this play is working out perfectly. I mean, there is a window right there where Andy Dalton can easily make this throw. He's already thrown the ball, but he, you know, there is a window there. But the problem is there's also a Miami Dolphin who is dropping back in the coverage. So this really has to be a perfect throw. And this was a huge play because this was actually on a fourth down and three when they were down 16. And as I said, they came back and tied this game. So if they don't, didn't convert there, they would have lost the game. There was only 30 seconds left. So uh, the fact that they were able to, to convert, that gave them another opportunity. They did score another touchdown to make it a two-point game. And that's when this play would happen, where what happened was the way it's going to work is that it's man coverage. There's a double team uh, on a on Tyler, Tyler Eifert on the bottom of the screen. And what's going to happen is that they're going to run that, basically, where a tight end runs out, tries to get in the way of a Miami Dolphin player, then you have the halfback run. Hopefully he gets open. He can just outrun his assigned man. And hopefully, you know, a Cincinnati player can get in the way of his, his assigned man, which can allow for some separation. And after the ball is snapped, it's working out okay. You know, this 
can work out, but it could be difficult. I mean, if Andy Dalton makes this throw right now, his receiver, or his, excuse me, his halfback is going to have to make the catch and then turn the corner and try to get a touchdown. It's a real 50-50 play, and with the, the entire game on the line, sometimes you don't want to take a 50-50 shot. You could, uh, it's debatable, but Andy Dalton, he actually scans the field and notices something else. He noticed this was actually, actually he realized this a little bit before. Uh, you saw him look at the line, but he noticed that right over there, uh, a Miami Dolphin player has given up containment to some degree, so he can try to run to the outside. Even though there was a blitz on this play, uh, it's a five-man rush, he still has an opportunity to try to get to the outside. So he's going to do that instead. He is able to get around the edge. And since it was man coverage, he's able to get into the end zone for the conversion to tie the game and send it to overtime. Uh, one of the most wild games ever. You know, uh, it was kind of, I thought for a second that might be Andy Dalton's swan song. He actually was able to even have one more good moment for Cincinnati where he picked up a win against uh, Cleveland. And I'll show some highlights from that game as well. I'm mostly showing highlights, I mean, because I do think that he doesn't do a lot wrong. You can argue he doesn't necessarily uh, do enough, good enough to warrant like a big quarterback contract, but he's easily one of, if not the best backups in the league currently. This play was actually, I think, one of my favorite plays I watched of him all season. Uh, he definitely makes some good reads sometimes. This is a good example. It really... Typically, uh, I think what he what he tends to get a little bit more credit for is his pre-snap reads, not so much his post-snap reads, but he can make the post-snap read from here and there. He's actually a pretty smart player. This is a good example where it's a cover three zone, and uh, you're going to have uh, the receivers on the bottom of the screen run those routes right there. But really what I want to take a look at is going to be that Cleveland player because he's in charge of covering the zone that he's currently half in right now, the zone that's covering the, the sideline of the end zone to Andy Dalton's left. And uh, one thing you're going to notice right when this ball is snapped is he's actually going to be moving down to make sure he's covering the slant route, which is further down. Now, you know, in zone coverage, people often say that you basically, it's, it's a suggestion, not a rule of where you're supposed to be because sometimes teams will run routes with an idea to try and, you know, uh, beat you in that way. I actually think that he just got confused, though. I think he thought it was man coverage. The way that he, actually, I'm pretty sure that it is what happened, is he, he got confused, thought it was man coverage. It wasn't. It's clearly uh, zone coverage, as you see, by the way, everybody else is running. So now, because of this, it means that that Cincinnati player is going to be wide open, since no one's covering the corner of the end zone. But also, if you look at Andy Dalton, he noticed this instantly. He instantly figured out what was going on. He's in the throwing motion right now, and I only showed it, you know, the Cleveland player only took one step, and then I paused it, and now he's in the throwing motion. Dalton just picked up on it so quickly, was able to easily make that throw. They get the touchdown. They actually had uh, two players open, but he just threw it to the first guy he saw open, because typically when you have someone open in the end zone, you're not going to hesitate. You shouldn't, and he did not. Uh, really just a, a a good play by Dalton. I know everyone's going to say, well, that play was mostly just a defensive breakdown by Cleveland. And yes, it was. But at the same time, you have to be able to take advantage of defensive breakdowns. And it's sometimes easier said than done because when you're playing football, you kind of expect things to happen in a certain way. And so when something happens that's wrong, sometimes you just sort of freak out and almost wonder if there's going to be like some surprise. Maybe a safety is dropping back there. You know, maybe this is designed and they're trying to fool you with something. Uh, but sometimes people just screw up. So, you know, you have to be able to differentiate the two, and he can absolutely do that. Uh, I'll show one more play. This is going to show off his patience, where it's going to be a cover two man. That's going to be a route that he wants to throw to. This is a good route against cover two man. Uh, but after the ball is snapped, it's going to take a little bit for it to develop. I mean, there's contact at the line, so his receiver cannot really get off. And also, there is pressure almost immediately. So, well, it was a good route at the time. Now, all of a sudden, it's looking like it might not be as good and there could actually be some trouble. So a lot of guys would maybe even throw the ball away here or try to find something else, you know, try to find a check down or something. But Dalton is going to be patient because he knows exactly how much time he has. He steps up in the pocket, eventually does make this throw and is able to get the completion. That was a risky play. I mean, that could have ended up in a sack. That could have ended up in, you know, a strip sack potentially had he had things gone terribly. But he knew exactly how much time he had and how much time he needed and made the correct call. And that's just honestly a lot of what he does. I mean, that's just a huge thing for what he does. 
That's why I like him as a player. I've always been a big Andy Dalton guy. I've never been like, I never thought he was elite, but I always thought that he was very good, very underrated. It's a weird thing in sports where if you're not elite, people talk about you as if you're terrible. He's been a good quarterback for a very long time. He had some very good games in Cincinnati. He won a lot of games with Cincinnati. And I do think that if Prescott goes down for four games or whatever, he can lead you to three and one. He can do that. So, And that's what you really need out of a backup quarterback. You don't need a backup quarterback to Nick Foles it and win a Super Bowl. That's not what you expect. Obviously, it's great if that can happen, but... Really, you expect Andy Dalton to just be the kind of guy who can, you know, keep the team afloat. You, that's what you expect out of a backup quarterback in general, and he can more than keep a team afloat. I mean, he's he's a guy who's he has made five straight playoff appearances, or I'm not sure if he was there for the beginning of that, but he's made several playoff appearances. Uh, you know, he didn't win any playoff games, but he definitely has had his moments, and they probably get a bye week if he didn't get hurt that one year where there was the infamous Fontes Burfitt game. They probably wouldn't even have had to play in that game had he stayed healthy. So, you know, this it's this video has kind of turned into a bit of a, a uh, you know, a tribute video for uh, Andy Dalton, even though I'm not a Bengals fan. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that that's it kind of made it both ways, where it's the end of an era in Cincinnati, Dalton is gone, but also it's a great pickup for, for the Cowboys. He's one of the best backups in the league right now, so definitely a good move for both sides, and it'll be interesting to see how this one plays out.